Okay, so I wanted to do just a little bit of an update because I am working a little bit on this uh, whenever I have time. I uh, finally got out and hooked one of my turbines back up. Got the I-1500 back up and going because I hate having windy days and nothing grabbing it. And of course the Missouri turbines going up there. This is 20 to 25 mile an hour versus the I-1500. Okay, so now the point of this video, I am updating things. I think it's going to work better, but as you can see, eh, it's, it's a mess. I've never been good at neat. Okay, so... <laughs> I hate that display. I will say, I, I'm going to put links to these. I've been using these uh, controllers because... Uh, they're cheaper. They're like ten dollars. You gotta wait ten. I mean, you gotta wait like two, maybe three weeks to get them from China. But they're ten dollars a piece, and they work every bit as good as the Wind Turbines USA.com ones. They are the same controller on the inside, just black and unbranded. So. Now the point of this was I wanted to demonstrate how you use batteries to get them, get these turbines to work with these cheap inverters. Now I do want to stress these cheap inverters are not ideal. I use them because they are power hungry. They're not very efficient, but they can take a lot of the power that I throw at them and get rid of it. So I use these to, you know, suck up whatever I'm making whenever I don't have, uh, you know any other anything else to draw off of the system as at the end of the day what I'm trying to do is uh, see how much power the turbines can make over time not necessarily you know how well they'll keep my batteries charged I want to see how much they make over time now uh, as the messaging someone on one of my other videos because he has an i1500 and he's running it straight to one of these uh, inverters and one of the things that you're going to find is the i1500 will <coughs> get way outside of the uh the voltage rating even uh, the 24 volt turbine it it'll make 60 70 volts and once you get over 50 volts on these 45 on these ones, uh, just word of the wise, I think these are better. Uh, but once you get outside of their voltage range, the, the inverters shut off and the turbines will just freewheel. So if you run it straight to the inverter, you'll probably exceed the voltage and it'll shut off. If the wind is cooperating and the inverter can grab the, the voltage that the turbine's making, it'll probably clamp down on that so hard that it'll bring the turbine to a stop. So this is how you get around that. I use these batteries. Right now, this, this is what my I-1500 is going to, just this circuit here, and going to these six batteries over here. It's easy to think about it in terms of I'm using the turbine to charge my batteries, and then I'm using my batteries power my my inverter over here now the way I have this set up is this is a solid state relay if you go this route you do need to get a heat sink I have a ton of these old CPU heat sinks that's why I use this but you can uh, get proper you know fitted heat sinks for these uh, solid state relays off of eBay for you know ten dollars I use this controller to turn this relay on and off and then this relay is what supplies the power to my inverter over here. The way this controller works is, we'll go through the menu right quick. So whenever battery voltage gets up to 26.9 volts, it turns this relay on and that's what connects battery voltage to my inverter. I have this set up to where it turns on at 26.9 and it will turn off the relay at 24.5 volts. You don't want to get down below 24 volts. You don't want to go beneath battery voltage. 
there's a couple other little steps here. Always leave that menu zero. I leave that menu zero. I really don't know what that menu does. And this, there's supposed to be an O over here. There we go. Ah. <laughs> it's on at high voltage. Now you can train, change this to turn on at low voltage if you are using, I don't know, a charger basically uh, to turn a charger on. So that's how that works. Doing it this way with batteries. See the batteries add enough resistance to the turbine to keep our voltage well within the uh, the the inverters you know voltage range and that you need that but if you just have these batteries connected straight to the inverter whenever your turbine is not running it will just drop your batteries flat to zero now whenever I started doing this that's what I was doing and I went through a lot of batteries didn't hurt my feelings these batteries are fairly cheap they're 20 bucks uh, a piece uh, so I mean I guess cheap is depending on your perspective. If you have a couple of uh, larger car batteries, you probably don't need quite so many of, of these. It is going to depend on what kind of batteries you're running and how many of them. But that is how you connect all this up to run a, a turbine to, you can use any kind of inverter. You can use any kind of grid tie inverter uh, or um, just, just a standard inverter that you're going to plug you know, your, your tools and stuff directly into. Now, if you are using just a standard inverter where it's not always going to have a load on it, you're going to have to have a brake controller. You're going to have to have something that, or not necessarily a brake controller. You can use you know, the same thing, this, one of these switches. Whenever voltage gets too high, you have it kick on a resistor, and that will bring your voltage down to keep from hurting your inverter keep from blowing up your batteries anyway I don't know if I explained that adequately if I did awesome if I did not just uh, you know leave a comment down below and I will I'll try to get back to you very quickly thanks for watching guys have a wonderful day